we got our teeth cleaned and July 1st and and it was downhill after downhill that. since then yeah. okay and we haven't had any seizures or anything like that but we've just been very lethargic and we were painful at first and now we're kind of turning like this towards the yeah. left okay and falling So Coco is a five-year-old castrated male Maltese that presented to us today for a history of turning to the left, being painful, and being incoordinated and lethargic. Uh, so Coco had a dental performed a couple weeks ago, and just since then, the owners noticed a behavior change, and then he became painful, and now he's turning towards the left. He just prefers to lay down and go to sleep. Um, on examination, he was dull, he was distant, he had a tendency to walk in circles towards the left. If we supported him, he was able to walk, but he would start to buckle in the front limbs. Um, the nerves around his face were normal, so he, his cranial nerves were normal, um, and his spinal reflexes were normal. So when we have a five-year-old dog that is walking in circles, has evidence of behavior change and pain, um, that's a Maltese, the primary concern is for something like encephalitis. Encephalitis in dogs is typically autoimmune, meaning an overactive immune response. Uh, the immune system is the body's defenses against things like infections. So normally the immune system is uh, looking for infections and only mounting an attack against things that aren't part of the body or foreign things, infections, etc. And what autoimmune disease is, is when the body loses the ability to tell what's me and what's not me and mounts an attack against itself. So. so here we are looking at Coco's MRI. Uh, on the left panel here we have a sagittal T2 weighted image. So Coco's nose is over here, this is the forehead, top of the head, so this is as if we unzipped Coco right down the middle between his eyes. This is his brain here, this is the front part of the brain, this is the cerebellum, this is the brain stem, and then this is the spinal cord of the neck. And the first thing we notice on the T2 sagittal uh, is there is too much hyperintensity or too much brightness within the brain stem here. We also get the sense that maybe the cerebellum's a little brighter than it should be, and then also the spinal cord is bright or hyper intense. If we think of Coco as a loaf of bread and we make slices, that's what this picture on the right here. So this is a slice made right where this green line is. So this is his right eye, his left eye, and as I scroll back, we get a new picture and the line is moving from his eyes back to his ears. These are his eyes, this is his brain. And as we scroll back, we start to see there's brightness in the left side of the brain here um, that we don't see on the right. Uh, we do start to see some of it on the right as we get further back. But then once we get to the midbrain or the mesencephalon, um, we see brightness or hyperintensity here. Uh, the whole mesencephalon is actually quite bright. And then as we get back into um, the brainstem, it's hyper intense as well. So all of this. Um, also, there is fluid within the left um, middle ear canal, but the pathology, the abnormality that's causing his changes in behavior and his dullness and his turning to the left is all of this brightness within the brain stem here and within the uh, left thalamus. So that's what's causing all of his symptoms. This is very consistent with inflammation or encephalitis. So the next thing we did was a spinal tap where we use a needle to collect this fluid uh, surrounding the brain and spinal cord. And we look at the number and type of cells. Normally, spinal fluid should have less than five nucleated cells per microliter. And Coco had about 800 nucleated cells per microliter. So very, very abnormal. Since it's autoimmune in origin, treatment is immunosuppressive medications to decrease the immune system, so, or decrease the overactive immune system. So we do that with drugs like prednisone, but we also add in other immunosuppressants that um, are just more powerful and let us use smaller doses of prednisone and smaller doses of the other immunosuppressants. That way we can get a um, additive effect between the two of them. Coco is going to stay with us tonight on a Cytosar CRI. 
Cytosar is that second drug that um, is also an immunosuppressant that we use in addition to the prednisone. He looks great, his exam's normal, great. Um, seems comfortable, visual, moving well. Um, we got a, got a nice kiss right on the mouth, <laughs> mouth from him. Um, ah, so, you, he's doing great. Um, the, so we did set his R number six today. Um, yeah. We call him the miracle dog. <laughs> that makes Fun you the going. miracle doctor. <laughs> you do. <laughs> All right, buddy. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay, bye.